involved in the last uh, minutes of the Cal Poly game last week. He was suspended for the first half. He's a defensive end out of Hardin, Montana. Certainly of note, the defense playing well, but Croy Bierman, one of the emerging stars on there, has not been out there yet. Maybe we'll see him in the second half. Well, and it's important that he does get back in this game and play in that second half because it looks like Alan Sines was banged up too much to come back yeah. in. Jesse Carlson, a freshman out of Billings West, was back in last series. J.R. Waller has the football, and he's not going to get anything on that play. Good pursuit by that Portland State defense, and I believe that was uh, 22 Jordan Sin out there again, and Jordan Sin is uh, pr proving that he is a sure tackler and a good hitter and has some speed out of that defensive back spot, the safety position. Well, and the Portland State defense did exactly what you want to do on a wide sweep play like that. They just strung it out. They just stayed, they stayed, uh, continued to string it out and made it all the way to the sideline and only, only two yard gain. Second and eight from the 31, Bergquist is under center. Bergquist and it's batted down. That's Friesen again. He fought off the the block attempt by the tackle there. Got his hand up and it was batted down. Friesen, a nice play. Well, he's so relentless. Grizzly fans are used to seeing the relentless play of Mike Murphy and Lance Spencer and great defensive ends. But there you see it. Ryan Friesen just stays with it, keeps battling. He'll do whatever he can to stay with the play and finish it. Excellent pass deflection right there. Friesen moved from linebacker. He is now a defensive end, and he has really excelled out of that spot for Portland State this year. So third and long. It's third and eight from the 31. Cole Bergquist is out of the shotgun, steps up. Now he's getting some pressure. Bergquist dumps it off. He does get it off, and he was outside the tackles. No intentional grounding, and that looks like uh, Adam Hayward, the linebacker from Westminster, California. Well, you can just see the speed difference as Bergquist will step up in the pocket right here. Not a bad job stepping up, but just a speed difference right there uh, between linebacker and quarterback, and good effort. Good effort to force Cole to throw that ball away. I'll tell you what, Hayward did a nice job of fighting off about three blocks right there and uh, showed some speed to get out there. And now it's a punting situation. So Tyson Johnson is in there as the Montana offense has stalled two times in a row. Portland State making some nice adjustments. Another low snap, but Johnson gets off a beauty. It's a spiral. Ferrino is under it, and he calls for the fair catch. I didn't see him uh, signal for it, but I guess he did at the 23. And and that's where Portland State will set things up, a 47-yard punt by Johnson. Well, you mentioned it, Jeremy. Give credit to the Portland State coaching staff defensively and to those players the last two series. They have made the proper adjustments for the game plan that Montana came out with offensively. Now it's going to be mm -hmm. up to Coach Fennessey and that offensive staff to counter. Uh, one thing you mentioned about that Ferrino fair catch signal, referee judgment, sometimes that can be called a penalty if you don't have that signal up long enough and clear enough. He waved it real quick at the end, and that can be penalized at times. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. Dustin DeLuey in at the defensive end slot, and there are flags all over the field, and I think we'll back Portland State up five yards. Boy, it's nice. to It's fun <laughs> sometimes to see the woofing that goes on in a football game like this. Over the snap. First start, number 29 on the offense. Five yards to the previous club. The down the knees, one. Tight end Scott Weaver there jumping off. The excellent fullback number five, Alan Kennett for Portland State. He was he was going to lead on a little iso play there and run right into Kyle Ryan. And right before when that whistle blew, boy, they almost collided and had to stop and jaw a little bit at each other. <laughs> I'm sure telling each other, hey, here we come. We'll bring it on. Alan Kennett made it all the way to the national title match in wrestling for Portland State last year. He's a heavyweight wrestler, a tough kid, and uh, he will certainly not back down to any way. As Bodiford is in motion, they fake to him. Ruben goes up the middle, and Murphy comes off the end and makes a shoestring tackle. Another great play by Mike Murphy. Yeah, Alan Sines, fortunately for Grizzly fans, is back in the game at defensive tackle. And Mike Murphy, what a quick first step. What an amazing get off. There's times watching Grizzly football games, I like to just simply watch him get off the football. He just does such a good job. This, this time he doesn't even have to. He reads. They kind of influence Paul the tackle. Uh, but he just is smart player. He sits there and reads it correctly, makes a good play. The crowd is into it. It is second and long for Portland State. The ball is marked back at the 19. They fake to Ruben. They're looking for the screenplay, and it's not there because Kerry Mullen does a nice job to get out there and bust it up, and now there's a late flag on the field. Kerry Mullen did a nice job right yes. there to bust that screen up. 
Well, one thing you always tell your defensive linemen, when those linemen stop blocking you that fast, it's not Christmas. You're not going to get to the quarterback <laughs> that easy. So something's up. And, and Kerry Mullen did a nice job of sniffing that out. And it looked like because he did that, can it probably Number cross? Yeah. Here. Number 61. Five yards to the previous spot. The down remains two. When that happens, Kennett Kennett ends up going past the line of scrimmage because as the play's strung out, he's just trying to get open and he runs past the line of scrimmage. Once the receiver crosses the line of scrimmage, now your lineman can't be downfield, thus the penalty. Interesting, and sometimes when the screen is not there, that's when that kind of thing happens because uh, it just takes too long to develop. 8.33 to go in the second quarter. The Grizz fans are pumped up. They're urging on that defense. It's 14-3 Montana, and it is third and 14 from the 19 for Portland State. Sawyer Smith drops back. He has a lot of time to throw, and it is through the hands of Ferrino, and it looked like it was thrown a little high by Sawyer Smith, a punting situation, and then we're starting to to settle into a little bit of a defensive struggle here. Yeah, we are. We really are. And again, these are plays that Portland State, with their athletic talent, needs to make. Uh, not a bad throw, a little bit high, but Ferrino, who ran a pretty good route, just didn't get his hands turned over for that ball. If Portland State wants to come into Montana and pull off the upset, their, their play are going to have to make those types of plays. And it looks like Montana will get good field position here as Tough Harris has it at the 40, but good special teams coverage. And again, it is Kenneth Mackins, the third wide receiver, that makes a great tackle for the Vikings. It's 14-3 Grizz. This is Montana football only on Montana's news station. We are back at Washington Grizzly Stadium, 8-19 to go in the second quarter. It's first and 10 for Montana. And uh, coming up on the Stewart Title Halftime Report, we have Robin Selvig, the Lady Grizz head coach, as Cole Burquist tucks it and run and has all kinds of running room. He's past midfield down to the 41. And as I mentioned, we're going to talk with Robin Selvig, have highlights and statistics coming up on the Stewart Title Halftime Report. And that was just a good job by the Grizz there. They get the good field position. They take advantage of it. A nice play call out. It looks like it's a design keeper, too. Yeah, well, you know what he does? Cole's going to receive the snap, and he's going to read the defensive end. He's going to jump and, and offer the ball to Lex Hilliard. If the defensive end chases Lex, he's going to keep it. Uh, great read right there by Cole Burquist. If the defensive end sits on him, then he'll give it to Lex. Ooh, looks like a broken play, and there's a fumble, and the Grizzlies do a good job of getting back on it. It looked like that thing was a mess from the get-go. Yeah, somebody had the wrong path right there, whether it was the quarterback or the running back. Definitely uh, miscommunication, but good hustle. I'm not sure which offensive lineman jumped on it, but great hustle to preserve that football and keep this drive alive. It's going to bring up second and about 12. Matt Troxell is in the ball game now, and... Usually when Troxel comes in the ball game, you see short screens and he has some speed to get to the outside and we'll see if he figures into this play, but Bergquist is out of the shotgun, second and 12. The ball is marked at the 46 as they lost a couple yards on that play and there was a quick slant to Talmadge and it goes through John's hands. Well, I tell you, I'm really impressed with Odell Jackson again making a nice play, a good route by Talmadge and a, and a well-thrown ball by Bergquist, but you'll see Jackson just come in at the right last second there. Perfect timing and take away Talmadge's arm, unable to make the catch. Good play, Jackson. My eyes open up wide too when I look at a roster and I see that a guy played for Long Beach uh, Poly in high school. That's one of the top high yeah. school programs in the country. They produce 1A talent every year. And Odell Jackson played at Long Beach Poly. There's some contact as they're looking for Talmadge. There's a flag down. We might have some defensive pass interference. Well, it's going to be a good battle all day between Talmadge and Jackson. Two competitors both wearing number two on their jersey. That time it looked like they got a little bit tangled, and Jackson might get penalized here. We'll see what the call is here. That's the defense. On the defense, number two. Spot in the five. Automatic first down. It's a tough play you're not going to be able to see on the replay. Portland State did bring a blitz and uh, just trying to get the ball off quickly and you can see him get tangled up. It's tough to tell. Sometimes that's an inadvertent thing. The feet just get tangled, but there must have been too much contact while the ball was in the air by Jackson. So the Grizz on the move a little bit here. They're taking the good field position that they had after the punt and they're moving the football a little bit. It's first and 10 at the 36, 7.06 to go here in the second quarter. 
from Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula. There's Lex Hilliard, and he has no running room. Bottled up nicely there by the Portland State front, and that looks like a number 58 was in there, George Keanu. We have not talked about him yet today, but he's their lead tackler. Yeah, good football player. And again, Portland State, I've been impressed so far with how they have anything trying to go wide outside. They've done a really nice job of stringing it out. That was a stretch play right there, which is just a wide zone play. Uh, same basic blocking scheme, but you're really trying to bounce it to the outside. Portland State, nice job of stringing it out and containing it. Give him a gain of one on the play. It's second and nine from the 35. Bergquist rolls out to his left. He's getting some pressure. He finds Ryan Bagley. What a throw by Cole Bergquist. Bagley fighting his way. They still haven't brought him down. Now they finally blow it dead. They never did tackle him. He takes it all the way down to the 14, and now tempers are flaring. But Ryan Bagley shows some toughness, and Cole Bergquist does as well as he was getting some pressure and made a tough throw. Yeah, and you see the competitiveness of Ryan Bagley. I know I talked to you about that before the game, Jeremy, watching that young man compete at CMR. Just a fierce competitor. They're bringing this one back, apparently. So ineligible receiver downfield, but you were mentioning Ryan Bagley. He does make a good play there, but a tough break for the Grizz, as you see Bobby Houck there. I didn't see the flag uh, come down on the field, but uh, they do call it back as uh, apparently there was an ineligible receiver downfield, and that was a slow developing play, and that does happen time to it, time. It does, and it looks like it was a bootleg play, so the linemen are trying to fake a run action as the quarterback bootlegs, and sometimes the fake of that run action can take the linemen a little bit too far downfield. Cody Baylog, it looks like, was the guilty party. Got pulled out, being coached up, talked to on the sideline right now to prevent the error from happening again. Boy, and the Grizz were on the move. That's a big call right there. Lex Hilliard has some running room, but that is a nice tackle right there by Portland State. My goodness, I think that's Jordan Sin again. It is, and that guy is showing some ability because it is hard to stand Lex Hilliard straight up. He is such a physical runner, and that's not easy to do. Oh, you're right, Jeremy. You'll see right here. Great cut, first of all, by Lex, and there's Jordan Sin, who, boy, I've seen, I've seen Lex Hilliard deliver that blow, and very few people have come out on the better end to that but impressive tackle by number 22 Jordan Sen right there and that saved a big game because if he doesn't make that play Lex might still be running and that forces a third and seven for Montana at the 33 Bergquist out of the shotgun once again and he has some time to throw and he hits Ryan Bagley across the middle and it's going to be a first down for the Grizz. I tell you, it's fun as a quarterback when that receiver, your go-to guy, really steps up and gives you that confidence. You know that anytime you really need something, and every quarterback has the guy, you watch at any level, and when they really start getting in a groove, your quarterback has that guy that he knows he can go to and he's gonna be open and he's gonna make a catch. Right now, Cole Bergquist and Ryan Bagley have that going. And Bagley not known for his speed. He must be running some fantastic routes because he is getting open despite uh, not having the top-notch speed that some of the wideouts do have. As Bergquist kicks it out to Talmadge, and he is crawling for the first down, and he gets past the marker. He's down to about the 13, and John Talmadge has a first down. Well, one thing you're seeing right now, Jeremy, is I know we Grizz fans have watched it the last few weeks, but you're really starting to see Cole Bergquist mature as a quarterback. I mean, he's starting to, he's reading the blitz. He's knowing when he has to get the ball off quick and where he has to go with it. If they're not blitzing, he's getting them in the right run play. Just a, a, a great play by Cole Bergquist, but a good effort by these receivers, too, to get open and to continue fighting for yard. So it's first and 10. The ball is marked at the 13. The Grizz are on the move. And it looks like uh, they jumped off sides again. And uh, Montana continue to be plagued by penalties here. Ball start. Ball start. Number 78 on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. The down remains. One. I've been there, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, you see Bobby Hawk right there. They show him again. I tell you what, I've been there. It's so frustrating. You work on it, you work on it, you emphasize discipline, you practice it, and gosh, some days you just, you know, you're just a little bit off and not doing things like you know you can. And it's frustrating, but the key is, is for your players to hang in there, to persevere and to keep fighting. And, uh, you know, so far the Grizzlies have been able to do that. That's the key is, man, don't get down. Just, just hang in there and keep fighting. 
First and 15 from the 18. Burquist takes a big shot in the backfield, and it, the ball is incomplete. And let's see if Cole gets up. He does, but he took a big hit about 10 yards deep in the backfield, and it looks like that's Abdullah, which is on the safety blitz there, I believe. Or no, a George Keanu. George Keanu, the leading tackler, gets a hit on Cole there. Well, two things you see. First of all, when the Mike backer, Keanu, when he comes, he should be picked up. That's yeah. one guy that should always be accounted for, whether it's with your, your guard, your center combo. They've got to pick that up. So I think a miscommunication by the offensive line. But I also think, Jeremy, that you can see Talmadge's back injury there a little bit. Any uh, hitch, he knew he was going to get hit in the back, and he's being a little bit careful not wanting to get hit. The draw to Lex Hilliard is going nowhere. Portland State bottles it up nicely there. And that, man, I'll tell you what, Jordan Sin is playing a football game today as he makes the tackle again there. Well, you know what I think they're doing? It looks like Portland State is spying with number 22, that strong safety, Jordan Sin. And wherever Lex goes, he just spies him. You see him right there. He just, the, the one play we had before where he made the great tackle, he was right in the middle of the screen, lined up with Lex. Wherever Lex goes, he follows him. Uh, again, a good defensive adjustment to put a spy on Lex Hilliard. Jordan Sin is a sophomore free safety out of Beaverton, Oregon. Bolt Cole Burquist has Talmadge in the corner of the end zone. There's some contact, but it looked like Talmadge might have just lost his balance there. There is no flag on the play, and the, the officials uh, keep the flag in the pocket there, so it's going to bring up fourth down in a field goal situation. Well, it's good play call. Grizzlies try to roll to the opposite side and get Talmadge matched up one-on-one, -on -one, run a little corner route, a little post corner, fake the slant, come back with a corner route off of it, but Odell Jackson just does, again, a great job of man-to-man -man coverage on John Talmadge. Good look at it right here, and uh, that's after the play. You don't really see the contact there. The ball's marked at the 18, so a 35-yard field goal attempt from the right hash for Carpenter. The kick is up. It's a wobbler, but it goes right through, and the Grizz do get some points out of it, so they chew up a lot of clock, take it down, get a field goal out of it, and with 3.30 to go in the second quarter, the Grizzly Portland State 17 to 3. Well, and it's a big score because you put yourself back up by the two touchdowns. You earn those three points back, and uh, so great job by the offense to, to persevere there and, and hang it, but it also is a, you know, Portland State kind of a, a little moral victory there. You can see Coach Walls pretty happy to get away with it, just giving up three. Let's go down to John Langler, who's standing by on the sidelines. Well, Jeremy, we saw a punt return touchdown earlier from Tough Air, so we thought we'd track down Jefferson Heidelberger, who graduated from the Grizz football team last year, still going to school here, of course. First, uh, you gave Pro Ball a try before uh, this uh, fall started. Talk about giving a try up in Canada, and what's next for you? Well, I had a lot of fun up in Canada, but unfortunately, I was on a team that had a lot of big and fast and real good receivers, so it didn't work out, but I'm hopeful I'm going to run track in the spring, like you said, and... Uh, I'm hoping that at the end of that, I'll be in shape to try get another try one more chance while I'm still young and, and I still got it in my blood. And uh, of course, seeing Tough running that punt touchdown back, uh, shades of last year and couple last couple of years for yourself. You know, it, it was a lot of fun watching him do that. And uh, Tough's one of those natural athletes that makes everything look easy. And on that one, you know, that was a sweet run. And it makes makes you yearn for for doing that, but it's fun to watch too. Well, good luck to you and uh, good to see you on the sideline again. Appreciate it. Thank Appreciate you. it. Jefferson Heidelberger back upstairs. Well, that guy had some ability, didn't he? Yes, he did. I'll, I'll <laughs> never forget, Billy Cockhill was still the uh, receiver coach, offensive coordinator here, uh, when Jefferson Heidelberger's highlight tape came, his recruiting tape, and I was in the office that day for some reason and, and w sat down and watched that with him. And I, I don't know if I've ever seen a high school highlight tape Every single time Jefferson Heidelberger touched the ball in high school, he seemed to take it the distance. I've never seen a highlight tape like it. He was a great player. Pete Sloan kicks it short one more time. It's fielded at the 12. Brady Green took a huge hit and lost his helmet, <laughs> but Portland State gets it back out to the 25-yard line. There's Brady Green. He's laughing about it, and that's good that he's able to laugh and uh, lose his helmet and still laugh about it. Let's take a look at the Montana Grizzlies.com uh, scoring drive as well. 11 plays, uh, 41 yards as we take a look at the uh, replay on the return. Uh, Carpenter has made seven field goals in a row a 36 yarder 11 plays 41 yards 448 clock time and uh, Carpenter gets a 36 yard field goal again he's made seven in a row so he is hot a little bit Portland State has it first and 10 at the 25 yard line they're operating out of the eye Smith fakes to Rubin rolls out to his right and it picked off Torrey Thomas has it he's running across the field a strip attempt is 
not successful, and Torrey Thomas, his third big pick of this football season. Torrey Thomas seems to be in the right place at the right time all the time for the Montana Grizzlies. And what that shows you, Jeremy, is that he's a smart football player. He doesn't bite on the run fake. He makes a proper read. And when he sees the play action pass, he gets back into his pass drop, covers up the tight end, which is his read initially, makes a super play on the tight end, just dragging across the field. A huge play right now for Montana. If they can stick this thing in the end zone and go into halftime with even more of a cushion than they have already, again, those are the kind of plays that are going to win you a game that's going to put you in the, in the driver's seat when you're trying to win a Big Sky Championship. That's a coach's son right there making a play. That kid has some football instincts. Cole Bergquist gets it out to J.R. Waller. It looks like he dropped it. It's an incomplete pass, so it'll bring up second and ten. And we talked about this a little earlier, but coaches' kids just know the game better than some other players as we take a look at the replay. Would you agree? Absolutely, and, and that's what you see. Montana's uh, roster is loaded with them, and you know they grew up around the game. There's There are some great coaches in the state of Montana. I know yeah. it's a small state, but there are some fabulous football coaches in this state, and their kids, they grew up around the game. Uh, you know, their dad's watching film all the time and, and prepping, and they're well coached, and Gosh, they end up being very, very good football players. Terry Thomas, one of those good football coaches. He's the head coach at Dillon High School. They're playing Whitefish today as J.R. Waller moves the pile for about five yards. It'll bring up third and five. Terry Thomas, the father of Torrey Thomas, the head coach at Dillon High School. As I mentioned, they're playing Whitefish today, and he's uh, won a lot of football games and uh, obviously passed that down to his sons. Yeah, and, and to see two two sons like that, I mean, what a joy it must be for him as a father to be able to, you know, obviously today he's, he has got his own game, he's got yeah. to try to win, but, you know, to come watch your sons both play for the University of Montana, what a special thing. Cole Bergquist is out of the shotgun. We'll see if Montana can capitalize on that turnover. It's third and five. Bergquist has all day to throw the football. Now he tucks it and runs, and he has an alley. Cole Bergquist down to the 11-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Grizz. Well, as he matures, great play right there, Jeremy. But as he matures, I still think he's going to sit in the pocket a little bit longer. You'll see here on the replay, rolls a little bit left. Now he sets up. He doesn't need to take off. He's fine. Sit there. Let your receivers work. Let your receivers work. Now, I'm not saying that's not a good run because it is, and he converts. But as he matures, he's going to sit there and wait a little bit longer and let his receivers get open. And when he has to run, then he will make that decision. But again, a good conversion of a first down right there for Montana. Keanu made a nice tackle there. Bergquist has four carries for 32 yards. Looks like a bit of a broken play. Waller's knee was down in the backfield. He busted loose to the one, but the officials say his knee hit the turf back at the 17. You know, a tough call, and I was almost going to say, you know sometimes when you, on a kickoff or part return when the ball is dropped, and at first you think it's going to be a disastrous play, and then all of a sudden the guy picks it up and goes for like 50 yards. That almost looked like what was going to happen there where, you know, he kind of stumbled and fell down, and all of a sudden just a huge hole opens up, but unfortunately the knee was down. It ends up being a five-yard loss for Montana. And it looked like a good call as uh, Waller did stumble. His knee went down right as he was taking the handoff. So a good call there. It's going to bring up second and long now. Second and 15. The ball is on the 17. Four wideouts in the ball game. They kick it out to Ryan Bagley. The screen is set up fairly well. Bagley cuts back, and he is met hard at the 11. Hit from behind by the defensive tackle for Portland State. That's Jimmy Coe, the redshirt junior out of Downey, California. Well, we always tell our receivers, I tell you what, you want to stay on that sideline and get going as fast as you can because you, you take it back into the middle or dance, and you know here comes these big guys. And as you said, Co. Begley does a nice job of running with the football here. But right there as he starts to dance and cut back inside, here comes those big D linemen, and he gets whacked. Wow, he did take a big hit there. Did a good job of tucking the football in and holding on to it. Bergquist has it now out of the shotgun. It's third and 10. He has a nice alley to throw it. Gets it to Talmadge. Talmadge is going to be short of the first down. It's going to be fourth and a long one, maybe fourth and two. We'll see what the Coach Houck does here. He's a gambler. I could see him going for this. Absolutely. And, Jeremy, that's the same play they ran earlier, the same exact play. This time, however, they were in zone coverage, and so the loop-out route by Bagley, if you remember in the first quarter, they looped out Bagley, and he ran to the flat and almost got into the end zone, got us down to the one-yard line. Same exact play there, but this time zone coverage, so the underneath kind of the pick guy, Talmadge, was open, does a nice job of sitting down, brings up a fourth and two, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Coach houck has got to make the decision right here. I, I think sometimes you just take your points when you're down here. Uh, 
Better to get three more put up on the board and extend that lead a little bit. But Coach Houck has, the, I guess the decision you make is if you know you have a play, if you're confident, you've worked on it, you have a play that you're confident, whether it's a special teams trick play, as we know Montana has so many of those, or it's a great play on fourth and two that you've worked on, you've practiced, you feel confident, that's when you go for that. If, if you don't have one of those, you take the point. So it kind of depends on where you're at. Next Saturday will be live in Flagstaff, Arizona at 3 p.m. for the Grizz and Northern Arizona Lumberjacks. Jerome Sowers just having a tough season for Northern Arizona, and they're getting hammered at Bozeman today against the Bobcats, and uh, they're winless in the Big Sky Conference, but they're always tough down there in Flagstaff, it seems like. Yeah, they are, and I, I feel so bad for Jerome. He's a great man, and, and I talked to him two years ago when they were up here. I guess it was last year when, when uh, we did the game here, and Jason Marietta, who started off as a true freshman, had an amazing year and looked like just the future was bright and now has really struggled since, and, and uh, it's too bad to see Jerome having those kind of struggles, but again, you know, he'd like nothing better than to knock off the Grizz next week down in Flagstaff and kind of get their season feeling a little bit better. Boy, this could be a dagger for Portland State if Montana punches it in. They're going fourth and two. They're going for it. And uh, they hand it off inside. Hilliard has the first down. There's a fumble, though. They're blowing it dead, though. He got it down to the one, and it's going to be a first down. The clock will stop. Again, there's only 18 seconds left. Call it 17 seconds left in the half. They go for it on fourth and two, and they get a first down inside the one. So now they got to punch this in here with 17 seconds left. Well, and as I talked about, Jeremy, if, if, it's, if it's a situation that you've practiced during the week and you know that, hey, when we get in that fourth and short, this is a play we can run, whether it's based on a scouting report, a situation that you know you have, or just a play that you feel good about. Obviously, Montana had that play right there. That was a great, well-executed play up front. Gave Lex just enough crease. And if you, if you give Lex enough crease, you know with his power, Power and speed, he's going to get you the two yards you need. Well, you know, this is a key moment in the ball game here. If the Grizz can't punch this in, it's a big lift for Portland State. But if they do punch it in, going to the half, uh, up 24 to three, that's a big difference. Oh, it is. It's 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 enormous because when you think about the, the style of play that Portland State wants, they want to run the football, they want to control it, they want to keep the other offense off the field. And all of a sudden, if you're down 24 to three, that changes your entire game plan in the second half. Huge play right here at the end of this first half with 17 seconds to go. Lex Hilliard is going to set up to the left to Cole Bergquist. It looks like they were setting up in the formation where Lex is uh, to the left of Cole out of the shotgun, but uh, we have a stoppage in play here. We'll see what the officials are uh, talking about as they set up the play. Timeouts left. Montana is out of timeouts, so that uh, affects the play calling as well because if you run the football and don't get it in, there's only 17 seconds left, and uh, then the clock continues to run, and you have to hustle up to that line of scrimmage. Yeah, and it definitely will make a difference. Um, sometimes you'll throw the ball in that situation so that that doesn't happen, or you'll have two plays called in a row. Bergquist is going to throw it. And he's looking for the corner of the end zone. It's thrown out of bounds, and there is a flag down in the end zone. It looked like that ball was certainly not catchable, but there could have been defensive holding. We'll see what the call is. It looked like Talmadge might have got held. Well, and I actually like the route. Pass the defense, number two, on the defense, in the end zone. It'll be first down on the two-yard line. Doesn't really make that big of a difference because they were down so close anyways, it really just wastes some time. I, I really like the call. If I'm Coach Fennessy, I call it again. I don't know if we'll get a replay, but what you'll see is they ran a little loop in route by the number two receiver. I think you'll see it right here. You'll see the number two receiver right there on the loop in come free out right on the goal line. I thought Cole was going to fire it in there to him, but uh, not a bad play, something he might be able to come back to. I guess Cole did a nice job, too. If you can't complete something here, you don't want to throw a pick. Throw it deep out of the end zone. Just dump it off. The Grizz trying to punch it in here. Bergquist throwing again to Troxel, and that was a dangerous throw. It's incomplete, but boy, that could have been picked and taken the other direction. It was batted down there. Matt Troxel was the intended receiver. Well, Steve Shine and a great player. We haven't got to call his name much. Number eight for Portland State just flat jumps on it, just reads it all the way. Simply what they're trying to do is run Troxel back and forth against the man-to-man -to, -man to lose his guy and then run him into the flat. But Shine, who was covering the slot on that side, just guessed it, read it, and as you say, Jeremy, almost took it the distance. 
So we'll see what the play call is here. It is second and goal at the one. There's only 10 seconds left. They're going to go power game. Lex Hilliard is in the end zone for a Grizz touchdown. And there you go. There you go. There's your, there's your call. After that pass interference call, I don't care if there's 13 seconds left. That ball was moved down inside the one. Give the ball to number 38. Absolutely what the doctor ordered. 